So uh, no public comment. We can start with the business items. Good. Good morning, uh, morning. Dr. Randalls and Ms. Schottke and Dr. Flores. Uh, first business item, action item, is our, is our purchasing agenda, um, which is fairly uh, smallish uh, um, this week, this month, actually. And Dr. Randalls, you had sent an email last evening about the item regarding uh, the $240,000 for Harvard Leadership Academy, and let me just read to you what Mary Jo Coleman, who's really in charge of that, of yeah, that program, mm -hmm. in response. Dr. Reynolds had inquired about um, the steel case, don't, uh, steel case funding of our, really what we call our Harvard program, where we're sending for leadership training. We use some Title II dollars for that also, and she had just inquired about uh, the breakdown. And Mary Jo Coleman, uh, I'll just read what her response was. Uh, Title II funds are used for the course instructional rounds which was attended by principals, teachers, and non-cabinet central office staff from special ed and the curriculum office. Uh, Mary Jo was the only cabinet member who attended the course, and that was, uh, I think it was last week or two weeks ago. I'm not sure what the other course will, we will use Title II dollars for this year. The other potential courses in May, June for school turnaround leader or urban school leader are attended by principals, assistant principals, and or central office folks. Um, who, ex who ultimately attends is, is a decision between Teresa and Mary Jo as they look at uh, staff within the uh, uh, district. The attendance for the courses paid by Title II are predominantly attended by school administrators, teachers, or non-cabinet central office staff. A lot of our curriculum people will go to some of those courses too. So that's, that was her response to, to your question. Does that answer yeah. things for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Any, any other questions on the purchasing agenda? I get a motion to approve the purchasing agenda. So moved. Support. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Great. Uh, second action on there is, is donations uh, from Wolverine Worldwide. There's a little memo in your packet, which is a very, very nice donation for our students at uh, MLK Elementary for new shoes for each, uh, each student there. Uh, the estimate of that donation is about 10,500. Anything over 2,500 needs a, approval from, from this body. So we're asking you to uh, approve this to go to the board for their approval in January. Very nice donation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Uh, United Way and World, Wolverine Worldwide, um, that's great. Um, can I get a motion to approve the so donation? Support. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. And then the last two action items, three and four, related to, our, to, to Blanford uh, School. Uh, the first is the program services agreement. The other one is a shared use agreement. And just let me um, mention, these are agreements we've had in place for a number of years. It's just an extension. Uh, we were working on some language. There was some changeover at Blanford Nature Area's leadership. And so it, uh, we're just really updating these, these agreements that should actually run from July through June, so we're a few months late into it. But they have not changed significantly from where they've been in the past. The, the program services agreement just indicates the kinds of services that Blanford staff provide our students in the district. And then the shared use agreement is just, is just that. There's no cost associated with that. Um, it's just lays out under, their understanding both sides of, of how we use that Blanford Nature Area. The program service agreement, uh, there is a, a fee we do pay Blanford, 32500 to reimburse them for staff time and, and use of their facilities. So again, um, not changed significantly from what's been in place in prior years. There's actually a third agreement that we have with the city to lease the land that the school building sits on for a hmm. buck a year. Um, and that that goes for 20 years. That was approved back in 2012, I believe. So that's in place and will continue to be in place. These other two we essentially renew on a year-by-year -year basis. So it just would need your approval uh, for those agreements. Go to the board. Okay. Uh, individually? Probably. Sure. Yeah. 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 Can I get approval for the uh, Lamford Program Services Agreement? So moved. Support. Uh, all in favor, aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Excuse me, motion passes. And the um, approval to um, take this to the full board plan for shared use agreement. So moved. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Great, thank you. And then down to the reports update section, if you will. The first is, a, is our financial information through November, and uh, we continue to track on, on schedule. As I mentioned before, uh, we're in the process now of, of and will be after the break of um, closing out really our first six months, and we will develop a amendment one to the budget that will hopefully come to this body at the Finance Committee meeting in January. Um, as you're aware, there you know, obviously some things we're aware of already. The increased enrollment above what we had projected for our budget will result in additional revenues. That'll be a, a, a uh, adjustment. Um, we were able, because of that enrollment, there was a enrollment incentive in sort of our union contracts to pay them uh, what, happened, what amounted to uh, 0.75 percent of their base salary um, stipend. Uh, that went into checks last Friday, part of it. that Russ will go with their checks on the 29th. Uh, that was not built into the budget um, because our budgeted enrollment didn't exceed the threshold, so that'll be on the expense side. So just a couple of things that we're aware of already, and there's also the things we look at through, based on the six months operations and our understanding what, what could go hap uh, what may happen in the final six months of the fiscal year so uh, that'll come next month but through the through five months we're tracking as as appropriate and um, any questions on the financials good morning miss Slade. too bad somebody took all of our parking places this oh. morning mm -hmm. I think we might lose one or two with a snow pile yeah. no there were no oh. losing that snow. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're, we're just talking about the financials through November miss Slade. so anybody any questions on and Thank you. the fact that we're tracking according to, to plan and we'll have a budget amendment in, in January as we normally do. So. Any no. comments? No? Yeah. I think it's very exciting that the uh, teachers have already received that and uh, part of the stipend will receive it later uh, next month as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that's really great. Absolutely. Yeah. Is. yeah. And obviously they're a big part of, of the enrollment growth and Absolutely keep focused on that and it's, it's, it was great for that to happen this year so mm -hmm. all right Ken you've got a few things to talk about well, safe and dry. we're just finishing up projects uh, Ottawa pool uh, in the purchasing agenda was some inspector required items for emergency lighting we're finishing that the at university um, the fence around the parking lot had to be reordered the contractor ordered the wrong fence so we, mm -hmm. we halted that and whether we can get that in with the weather we'll see we'll do our best that's the last thing to finish there and then uh, we've started the design work on Ridgemore for reopening that so we really expect probably March or so we'll be bringing contract bids for uh, this committee to act on and move forward we need to get that open for them great yeah Questions, comments? The boilers are all working now, everyone's warm. <laughs> Today they're all working. That's a good thing. I've yeah. not Thank received any other reports. <laughs> Today's the day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very much so. Wonderful. Okay, let's. Uh... Bond, um, we're proceeding. The, the two. Uh, projects with time deadlines are Buchanan and uh, 54 Jefferson Museum. We're proceeding with those, and uh, we fully expect to be ready for construction by summer, if not before. That's our goal. So that will give us 15 plus months of construction time before we open up September of 18. Those are the two critical ones. We're, we're Working out some issues at city on w what we sh can do and should do there, and uh, we'll follow up with our advisory committee. Probably won't be till late January. I've had a couple of meetings with the architect CM team, trying to work through the different concerns. 
Ken, did you have the community-wide meeting at Buchanan then on the first? Yes. Great. How'd that go? Um, like most of those, we would have wished for better attendance, but uh, it went well. It went very smooth. The questions were all um, really relevant to what we're doing. Just some of them may be a little more detailed than we were ready for, but <laughs> sure. all in all, uh, it went very well. Good. Really, really encourage that we're reaching out to the community and, and bringing them into this process. It's great. Anything else? And then just a brief update uh, for this committee on the bond refunding. Mary Call back in uh, November, I believe, a resolution was passed to refund a prior refunding. And um, at that time, we the estimates had been we would our savings would be in the neighborhood of. 10 to 12 percent uh, firm or um, present value, 10 to 12 percent of the, the new of the old issue. Um, you shoot for a minimum of three to five percent, and so that was that was a significant savings. Well, probably many of you are aware since the election, interest rates have gone up, and uh, when interest rates go go up from a refunding perspective, it narrows that difference between the old bond interest rate and the, and the potential refunding. So our savings have decreased since then. Um, we're still in the range where it makes financial sense, but because it's a refunding of a refunding, uh, we have to wait to issue it until about February the earliest. Mm -hmm. Uh, unlike when you refund, an, when we refund an outstanding issue the first time, you can essentially do it any time. The second time, you have to wait. And so, uh, we're hoping they don't rise too much more significantly uh, by then, because uh, there is a risk now that it may not make sense financially for us to do that. So, uh, we haven't, unfortunately, haven't incurred a lot of costs yet, and, and I stay in contact with our financial advisor on a weekly basis to look at that. But right now, it still looks good, and hopefully I can come back to you in uh, January, the next meeting, and, and tell you the same thing and, and say we'll, we'll be uh, close to uh, floating those bonds sometime in, in February, but who knows, who knows from, for now. So that's just a quick update on that. And the last item we have under under reports and discussion is we've got a director of purchasing, Cheryl Hawley, here, and she's been has put together actually a new vendor application ap approval process that she wants to show you. Um, you know, there's been a lot of dialogue really for the last year and a half or so about, especially in connection with our bond issue, and, and you know, trying to uh, take a, a closer look and get additional data on, on the folks we do business with. Um, you know, from a diversity perspective, from a fairness perspective, if you will. And so uh, we've been meeting internally about that over the last several months, and, and Cheryl has put together a, a new uh, application process that will hopefully address some of those issues and allow us to, to gather some of this data that we can use going forward. And, and I know there's been some questions from board members about that over the uh, since I've been around, and I think this will allow us to better address those questions on who we do business with. So, Cheryl, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Behind you. Yeah. <clears throat> you can see the application that we created. It just covers the basic information um, from our vendors. Um, some of the important things that we covered down here. It talks about the type of minority. So there's 12 different um, minorities that the federal government recognizes. And those are the ones that we put in there. Um, and so this makes it very easy. vendors sorry. thank you sorry roughly over 10,000 vendors um, we'll give them a timeline to submit back to us and um, this system was built so that it would talk to our business platform so we'll be able to track the spend them annually 
um, once we upload all the information. So it's a nice and a nice and easy form. It's um, it'll be easy for them to use. It'll be really easy for us to track. So we're pretty excited about it. We're excited to see all the response that we get. Any questions? Uh, it looks like there's just one typo. Is your business located within the city of Grand Rapids? Well, that was one of the questions um, to see if it was located in the city of Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. I see. Low, low, low yeah, just spell it. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Oh, it's nice. Oh. <laughs> I didn't see it either. Right. Right. Thank you for catching that. I can go back and fix that today. <laughs> Out of all this work, oh, you really find it. No, I really appreciate you finding that because I didn't find it. I always like that when our forms, you know, any form. Yeah, I want to look at forms all the time. So I want to find it before we send it out to 10,000 vendors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. How does this differ from previously? We didn't have any of the other We stuff. We didn't. So what we've always done historically is we ask for a letter of interest. And they send a letter of interest in a W-9, which we follow through to make sure they're current all, all their stuff. And then we register them as vendors. But we've never tracked. So this um, makes it streamlined, makes it easy. Everybody's going to do the same thing. Um, so we're kind of excited about it. Yeah, and I, I just want to clarify um, something that Cheryl said. This, this particular application, um, we, don't, we don't need board approval for. Just this, this is for your information and for any comments you have. Um, we hope to implement this uh, unless there's any significant questions you may have, but it isn't an, an issue uh, from our perspective that needs that needs board approval. Just it, it's a revision of an application we currently have. So I think the the, the fact that it's consistent with uh, federal forms too gives a good uh, um, position for the our district as to why we collect the data. Yeah, and the city and CC have similar right. forms and processes. Great. Excellent. Thank you, Thanks. Cheryl. Thanks so. for your work on that. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. I think, you know, uh, credit to Dr. Flores for bringing this up and continuing to bring it up. But this is, as long as I've been on the board, Sunita Lanier uh, and Raynard Ross have brought this up as a concern in terms of following, tracking, just uh, making sure we're partnering uh, as deeply as we can with local community Absolutely. members. So I think it just shows how great GRPS is to continue to push the envelope. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect. So, all right, uh, we're down to policy and is a sustainability report. Ken, anything? Yeah. Bring up. Well, I don't think nothing no. new to report this time. I'll share questions for Kristen. Good. I'd just like to comment uh, this being Dr. Reynolds, your last meeting. It's been a pleasure uh, as leadership of this of this finance committee, and obviously your your work on the board too. And and uh, we've enjoyed it. And all the best to you in your future endeavors. I I know you won't be a stranger around here, but uh, we appreciate your leadership on this on this finance committee over the last uh, number of months. So and since I've been involved, so thanks so much, and all the best to you and. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to the rest of the members you as well as Dr. Too. Randall. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, and you guys have been a great committee. I think pushing back is always important, and asking tough questions. So, you know that's um, more um, all important in this uh, nine-member board. So, thank you very much. It's been great. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everyone. Too. She goes. Yeah. And I hope she I go. goes. Yeah. And Merry Christmas. I hope you all have a great break. I know you deserve it. It's been some great work that I've seen. You can take that uh, short break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really is quite a change. <laughs>